This little handheld ham radio means more to me than any other I own. I've only been a ham for about four years, but I bought this radio 25 years ago. I've never made a single contact with this radio, but that's gonna change today. After I tell you the story of this radio, I'm gonna get it on the air and make my first contact with it. It's story time on Ham Radio in Action. Let's get going. Today I'm back at Roswell Area Park in Roswell, Georgia, USA. It's a beautiful summer day uh, and I'm just happy to be outdoors. To tell you the story of this Kenwood TH22AT, we really have to start way back in the mid and late 70s. My dad, like a lot of people at the time, was really into CB radio. It was pretty much more than a fad. I guess it was kind of a fad, but it was more than a fad. It was really a cultural phenomenon. If you younger viewers um, have never heard it, go ahead, do yourself a favor and, and hit up YouTube or your favorite streaming service and check out the song Convoy. Um, Convoy has honest to goodness, well, a fake CB conversation throughout the song. Now, this wasn't just some niche song that truckers listened to. This song reached number one on the U.S. charts, both country and pop. It was on the radio all the time. That's how popular CB was. It wasn't just truckers and, and, uh, and kids using CB. I mean, it was really, really widespread. So anyway, my dad was into CB. He had one in his car. He had one at home and he would talk to people on it all the time. Local people, truckers passing through. And on those rare occasions when the 11 meter band would open up and uh, CBers would experience what they call skip, he could talk to people on the other side of the country. He really enjoyed the hobby. At the same time, my dad had a business relationship with a company called Amateur Electronics Supply, AES. Now this was a major a player in ham radio, uh, a big vendor of radios and ham equipment. And my dad knew the owner and he knew a lot of the guys who worked there and they would tell him stories about ham radio and always encouraged him to get his license. Well, at that time, the FCC required that you know Morris code or CW as we call it in the hobby in order to get even the most basic ham radio license. Now, my dad tried. He took a class on Morris code he studied, he worked at it, he listened to tapes, and he tried, and he sat for his ham radio test, I think, three or four times. He always passed the written portion, but he just couldn't pass the code portion. So he never got his ham radio license, which is sad. And uh, at that point, he kind of gave up. Let's fast forward to the 1990s, the mid-90s, 1995 to be exact. My dad's business uh, had encountered some problems, and he actually had to close it. Now, you may know that losing a business is hard on anyone, and my dad took it particularly hard because um, he just fell into a funk. And I was looking to get him a gift that would make him happy, give him something to focus on other than his business problems, and uh, you know maybe allow him to meet some new people. I had just recently learned that the FCC dropped the code requirement in order to get a ham radio license. Well, I saw my opportunity and I took it. I went out and bought my dad this, the Kenwood TH22AT, which I believe at the time, and I could be wrong on this, was around five to $600. Uh, for me at that time, that was a pretty expensive gift to be giving, but he was worth it. I also bought him a study guide uh, for the technician class license. Well, when he opened the gift, he was just thrilled. I mean, he loved the radio. He thought it was great. Uh, he couldn't have been happier, and he, uh, I, from that point on, I never saw him without it. It was either on his belt, in his car, or sitting next to him uh, when he was at home, and it was usually on. Having the radio in his hand gave him all the motivation he needed to study hard. He studied, and I think he spent around two months preparing. He sat for his test, and he passed it first time, uh, and he was given the call sign KB9KBL. So I was thrilled. He was thrilled. It, it, the gift served its purpose. He was focusing on ham radio instead of his issues. He was happier. It uh, gave him a, a boost of confidence in studying for something like that and passing it. Having something he's always wanted, which was a ham radio license, 
Uh, I think it really helped him. And he loved the hobby. I mean, he always liked talking to people, strangers, anyone. He always enjoyed it. And with the ham radio, he was able to talk to people all the time. Uh, he made some new friends uh, via ham radio. And honestly, the hobby fit him like a glove because he just liked to talk to people. All right, so in the year 2000, uh, my dad, KB9, KBL, got sick and he passed away. And I miss him. I miss him a lot. And I think about what he would think of my adventures in ham radio and think about this channel and uh, how much he would enjoy it. And, you know, I think about uh, wishing I, I, I could, you know, connect my radio to Echo Link and, and connect up repeater here and there and talk to him. Anyway, uh, after he passed, um, I packed up his personal belongings and they came back to Atlanta with me, which included this radio. Now, over the years, uh, we've moved several times and uh, the boxes came with us from basement to attic to crawl space. Uh, you know how it goes. Jump forward to 2016 and I see a post, I believe it was on Reddit. It was a Wednesday, I know that much. I saw a post about a $30 or $35 ham radio. And I was freaking out because ham radio is expensive. How can there be a ham radio for $30? Well, I did some investigating, I did some more reading, and it turns out you absolutely could get a ham radio for $30 or $35, and I ordered one. It was gonna show up at my door by Friday. Okay, now I needed to get to work to figure out how to get a license. And uh, through you know browsing the web, I landed on my current club's website, North Fulton Amateur Radio League, nfarl.org if you want to check it out. And they were going to have a VE test session Saturday. Keep in mind, it was Wednesday. Well, I got busy. I downloaded the hamstudy.org app. I watched YouTube videos, instructional courses on, uh, on the technician class license information. I got a lot of help there. And basically, I crammed uh, any time I wasn't working, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and even Saturday morning before the test, and I, I sat for the test and I passed. Now, after passing my test, I was waiting for my call sign like everyone has to do, and it wouldn't show up for another 10 to uh, 14 days. I forget how long it took. But during that time, I tore my house apart. I was tearing through boxes, looking for this radio, crawl spaces, attics, basement, wherever we had stuff stored, I was going through it. And much to my disappointment, I couldn't find it. It was nowhere to be found. I don't know if maybe we misplaced a box, a box got lost, or maybe it was in the bottom of a box that got donated to charity, or we sold it at a garage sale. I didn't remember selling it, but it was certainly a possibility. Uh, but I was devastated because I wanted to get this thing on the air, use my dad's radio, and, uh, you know, if it would work and make it work, I couldn't find it. But recently, um, just this year, earlier this year, I moved again. And uh, in the process of unpacking boxes and going through them, uh, I found this on the bottom of a box that had some of my stuff, some of my dad's stuff. And I couldn't see the expression on my face, but I think if you could, uh, you may have thought that I found a gold bar in that box. I think I even yelled a little bit uh, when I found it because I was just thrilled. I'll tell you what, this radio is not going to see the bottom of a box again. It's going to be used, cared for, and it's going to have a uh, prominent position amongst my other radios. If you have a radio that has a lot of sentimental value to you, why don't you go ahead and tell your story, put it down in the comments. I know I'd like to read it and I'm sure others would as well. So now it's time to get this Kenwood TH22AT. It's a mono bander, uh, two meters only. Uh, I was able to replace the antenna because the antenna was probably critically bent uh, from sitting on the bottom of the box. I was able to replace the battery. The old Nike head battery uh, didn't have a charge and wouldn't take one. Uh, so I have a new charger, new battery, new antenna. This is a signal stick, super elastic. I think this fits the radio really nice. This radio is light. I can't believe how light it is, uh, but I'm excited to get it on the air. Let's see how it sounds. This is K4BBL on a new to me radio. Can somebody uh, give me an audio check? Let me know how this radio sounds.
uh-oh, didn't get the Roger beep. I had to program this radio manually from the keypad. I'm not used to doing that. I'm used to programming uh, these handhelds with a computer. I'm hoping I got everything right. I know I got the offset right. Hmm. Well, I'm very sad to say that uh, I can't get the radio to work today. And I'm really not sure why. Uh, I've got the tone set up properly, the right PL, the right transmit frequency, receive frequency. Uh, I can receive, I've heard people talking, but I can't seem to uh, ping the repeater. I tried uh, 146.52, uh, the simplex calling frequency to see if anyone could hear me on that, and I didn't get any response. So I'm going to have to do some testing and see if this is uh, outputting any signal at all, and if so, uh, what kind of signal and why I can't hook it up. So I guess that's it for today. I'm really disappointed I didn't get to make a contact. Uh, I tried, but there's something wrong. I hope it's not the radio. I hope it's just a, you know, a idiot error, a user error that uh, can't make it work. But I hope you enjoyed the story of this Kenwood. And like I said, if you have a sentimental story about one of your radios, leave it down in the comments. This is K4BBL73. I'm clear. Thanks for watching.